Well, here we are in the uh, clean air enclosure in the uh, laminar flow room. Uh, we are wearing the body exhaust system here uh, un under vacuum, under negative pressure. Well, I'm going to mark the, the landmarks of the... Uh, here's the iliac crest, anterior superior iliac spine, and here is the top of the great trochanter. And this is the very important part, because this is the vastus lateralis ridge. And this is much lower down. And this is the center of the wound. This is the center of the wound, not the top of the trochanter. Now the skin incision, the skin incision is not uh, very critical. So I make my incision. This is a very muscular man. It's the type of patient I wanted to have to demonstrate the, uh, the lifting of the trochanter. I take my finger under the deep fascia here and I go downwards distally and slightly posterior and the tensile fascia femoris is here. And I divide through the fascia and it's quite convenient to cut outwards here. Upwards and outwards. So, so there is my vastus lateralis, and I'm completely incision now, putting my hand completely behind the great trochanter, you see. And now I take uh, this retractor and put this under the the fascia at the front. Then I have, this is the opposite side. This goes onto the posterior fascia. And then these are connected with this um, spreader. This we call the initial wound retractor, like that. And again, stretching the wound. Here we have a weight and chain which is attached. Now we draw this through the wound, and there is the Geely saw through. Many people don't like a Geely saw, but I think it's a very marvelous instrument because it starts to cut. Right, so we wave with this. Now we take a hook, now here is a, just a heavy, ordinary retractor. I put this uh, into the uh, detached trochanter here, and we open that. One more click. So, and I find this nail, a very, very important uh, instrument. It's being inserted now under the glenoid labrum, and I work it round bit by bit to Because I must see, I must see the bony lip, the superior lip of the acetabulum. Now we have a chain attached to this, so that we don't leave it inside the wound. Now I put in the expanding reamer, which again engages with the pilot hole, and now I open this up to 50 millimeters diameter, which is the standard size. Which again engages with the pilot hole, one of the best ways, again, is, is this uh, double-handed instrument. You can use the sharp spoon, which I showed you, this sharp spoon, or this one, which has a, a, a cutting edge. And it's a very, very powerful instrument with two hands. And you'll see, can you close onto the wound, onto, into the thing now? You can see how I can this acetabulum with the scraper action. It's really an engineer's scraper on a curve. Now I'm going to make some more holes, smaller holes this time, on this evenated bone at the top. And this is with a quarter inch drill, which has got a collar so that I can't go too far. Now that's one, two, Three, four, five, 
This is the, the new socket, and I can see that in diameter, it is going to take, uh, uh, almost take a 54. Now, on this uh, socket, you can see that there is engraved, engraved on the face of the socket, uh, rings. The inner one is 50, and that is 54. And I'm going to cut this down to a 54. Now, this is uh, a double-ended socket, because I have the long posterior wall feature here, and, of course, I can't uh, reverse that. If you don't use this, then you can have a single-sided one like that. But I'm cho choosing one for the left hip, so I cut off this bottom one, and I trim the whole socket down to the 50... This is going to be the 54 line. Here's the cement. Here's it go in. Now here, the, the socket goes in obliquely, as I mentioned. You see the cement being squeezed. And the pusher. And it's coming up to the transverse position. Now I give it a coining. And we're now ready to hold on. So that finishes the socket. And now we're ready to start uh, working on the uh, upper end. Now, I take out everything, the, the, the complete uh, remains of the superior cortex of the neck of the femur. We make no attempt to go down the open end of the cut surface there. No attempt at all. And I go straight for the medullary canal, and there my assistant is showing the patella, and I found the medullary canal, and it's impossible to emerge through the cortex here, entirely inside the canal. Now I start with my reamer to open this up again, aiming again for the uh, patella, center of the patella. Um, come a little bit into valgus, cutting into valgus sideways, and now cutting into varus, ignoring, completely ignoring the antiversion. And there it is, it's a, a test prosthesis with this flexible stem. Now, <coughs> I'm going to put this in, into the valgus position, where I think it's going to, the offset of the head is going to be right, I'm going to do a test reduction to, uh, uh, to get a very definite length. So the length uh, of the neck, of course, is always the same. It depends on how much bone uh, you preserve. Right, in we go. Right. No, 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 no. Straighten it out. That's right. Now, you see, I'm pulling on that, and that is, I cannot distract that, so that is the complete length. It is the decanter back to its original distance from the side wall of the pelvis, because here is all the capsule, you see, and I am going to reattach this in slight overlap by, say, one centimeter, and this produces a femur, which I call the T, the T-shaped femur. The ordinary femur is like an L-shaped, an L-shaped, you see, but by shortening this, deepening it, shortening it, and putting the trochanter here, we get a T-shape, and we reduce the bending moment on the stem, and also we reduce the loading on the cement. We get both things uh, by this medial displacement of the femur. If I wanted to, not to have that, I would put a 45 in and bring the shaft of the femur more away from the side. So, there we are. Now, there is the, uh, the jig, and we complete this business uh, in this way. I put on here a little drilling jig, Uh, 
and just uh, lock this drilling jig. Uh, I, I'm quite pleased with the antiversion here. Uh, the antiversion is uh, very little, perhaps it's less than five degrees. And this carries holes which correspond to the 45 offset, the 40 and the 35. But this is a 40 and I'm going to use a 40, therefore I'm going to choose uh, this middle hole. And I'm drill front to back through both cortices there. Now I can pull the whole of this thing out and I have a little peg, a little metal peg, which I put through We often seem to miss the second side, I don't know why. There it is. Now this is that little, little pad, which is deliberately made small for reasons I'll show you. I now put in, I get my line of uh, section, which actually is, uh, if true, can you, yes, there. And you can see I cut off with the Gili saw incorrectly. So I now I section off the neck here, uh, keeping close to this hardened steel uh, peg. And this will give me the perfect length to have a, a very stable reduction. This is going to be the final position. That's going to be some, that's in line with the femur. And I'm going to start showing you the reattachment of the trochanter now. There's the double wire, that's the vertical double wire. Now you can see here, here is the double wire coming out at the back. Here is the medial wire, which is the yellow wire in the diagram, and here's the, the red wire. And I pass my prosthesis to make sure the wires are all out of the way. Mm. And uh, this is the rehearsal. Okay. Yes, just you can start mixing. And I'm going to... Uh, this is in line here. Everything is ready now for cementing, you see, in one line, just like that. You see, uh, this is the two-thumb technique, a very uh, a rhythm, keeping no blood mixed in, a little bit of blood there, but that's not too much. My two thumbs fitting like a piston, you see. Now, I build it up in that direction, and now the rehearsed position going in, and here, I push it down, and you can see the cement, I don't know if you can, yes, you can see it here, filling the, uh, the, pist the, the flange, you can see it becoming, it's starting to become trapped there, I push it again here, now you can see how it's going to become trapped, and now, you see, there is the piston driving it in. You can, I can see it in the monitor there. There is the flange, has acted as a piston, and is trapping it and driving it in. Here I'm holding the trochanter. I make a groove in the superior part over the summit. And I pass this. Can you straighten that out for me? This wire, what I call a wire passer. Can you hold that for me there? And I put the, the ends, the double wire in here. And the trick of using this is you leave go of that and you just let it push itself through. You see, you get the, the two wires come through. Now we bring the wire here, and that's the vertical wire that's going to come down there. There we are. And I thread this back. 
Again, through here. Making sure I don't get any, any knots or twitches in it. And there it is, crossed over here, ready to be tightened and twisted. Can we have some retractors? Now, read it right. Now, here again, the wire tightener once more. This is a very powerful tightener which does not change its mechanical advantage as you uh, move it. The ordinary uh, Kirsten wire is no good. It uh, changes its mechanical dis dis disadvantage, actually. So you put very little tension on the wire, so you may think you're sweating like hell. Now here, I'm tightening the four limbs in one. There we are. And now I'm going to lock it, quarter turn, slack off, and twist. Cut off. Flatten it down. Punch it back. And now we finish the operation just by putting on the uh, the anterior staple. The anterior staple of this boat. This is the thing that's going to stop it sliding backwards and forwards. There it is. And this is perpendicular to the osteotomy line. Uh, as is, this is how, that takes the posterior one per perpendicular. There is my little nut. Tubular spanner. And I now compress this from front to back. I want to show you this, our method of uh, stopping hematoma. We use a, a double-ended um, suture, and the first end uh, is a round-bodied needle. Round-bodied, that's because we take a positive grip into the deep fascia there, you see? Very definite, into the deep fascia, and a cutting needle might cut the sutures here. So we use a round-bodied, even though it can be uh, rather a nuisance to get it through the skin. The posterior is cutting and, and is easy. And we emerge uh, about one and a half centimeters from the skin edge. I use five of these. Again, you see, positively in the deep fascia. And uh, now coming out one and, a half, one and a half centimeters from the skin edge, the front. Again, at the back. And these pressure pads are put on and kept for one week. John, we are very satisfied. <laughs> Good. Perfect. Good. Bless you, dear chap. John, are you finished with us now? Or is there anything more you want to demonstrate? I, I can't hear. I think the microphone is, is disconnecting. Yes, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I congratulate you for the good operation. Thank you. And I, I am very much afraid that I can do something like you are. show you in its full the operation. Well, uh, I'll uh, approach this hip through an anterior approach, so-called Uter approach. That's to say, an anterior vertical incision uh, going from about one inch out of the anterior spine down to the lateral uh, aspect of the patella. Here is the patella. You cannot see it. Yes, you see it. I have the patella here. And here is the anterior spine. My incision will be on this line about 15 to 18 centimeters. I 
go a little above the anterior spine. Here is the tendon of the tensor, and here is the crest. I'll cut the tendon and the muscle along the crest to, re to release the tensor. I just detach the tendon and here the just adjacent part of the lateral fascia in order to release that and to be able to open correctly the space around the joint. And, and now, with the periosteal elevator, I detach all the fat at the anterior part of the capsule. I just turn under the joint, and then I will reset a crescent of capsule at the anterior part, at the front part of the joint. That's a crescent of the capsule, which I am resecting carefully. I will have, I shall have to reset much more, but for the moment, this resection, now we will, we will dislocate the joint. I ask, I ask to my assistant a traction faction on the foot by, with the use of the orthopedic table. Faction, vas-y, here, here. The traction allows me to open the joint easily, as you see, to introduce this modified Lombard spoon, lâche la traction, then to release the traction, complètement, complètement, then to release the traction and to ask for external rotation, tourne en dehors, par le genou, and the assistant will give external rotation, and in the same time, I will make a lever effect to dislocate the joint. I ask to the assistant, non, ça va bien, I ask for 90, I ask for 90 degrees external rotation. Then, here I take the contact with the lesser trochanter, which gives me the level where I must cut the neck. Here is my hammer. You must show my hammer. That's my greatest discovery. We see it very well. It, ma it made my name famous in the world. Now the femur is ready. I reduce the hyperextension to normal position. Et, oui, encore, encore, encore. And we will prepare the socket. The, the ceiling of the socket with this long straight chisel with one slope only, which allows me to orientate the attack. If I turn the slope against the socket, my chisel will slide down to the bottom. If I turn the edge towards the ceiling, I will attack exactly at the point I have chosen and break the cortex, the very hard cortex, condensed cortex at that point. I hope you can see, but uh, I work a little bit at the ceiling of the cavity. I can see very well, but maybe the camera doesn't allow you to see the bottom of the socket. We, the, yes, we see it well, Robert. We see where you're working too very much. I'm nice. working into, yeah. into the ceiling of the cavity. I take a, a piece of bone here, a very hard bone, that's allowed by the fact that I use a very long chisel, a very heavy hammer, all this hard bone, it's better taken away with a chisel than with a rimmer. The rimmer is just used to finish. I suppose that the size 46 is probably convenient for the first, for the first pass of the rimmer. Yes, it is. So, thanks. Right. That is my landmark. So let us, let us have a, a glance in the bottom of the cavity. That's the soft. The soft bone, the cancerous bone, which I have rimmed off. Vous voulez bien me nettoyer les dents? Uh, with the dislocation spoon, I take off all this cancerous bone. Can you see that the phantom looks 
downward, of course, about uh, 45 degrees, and also a little anteriorly. The position is that I can turn it, I can turn it to look posterior. You see that the, this part of the phantom, this part of the phantom comes out anteriorly a little, about 10 degrees. That indicates the anteversion of the element. I take the cover with two forceps. Tenez bien. Tenez, tenez, ferme. Pour vous. With, now, with these forceps, I take that out of the box. Uh, with you, vous êtes ici, le jeu. Oui, bon. Je vais prendre, I take the bag from one edge and put it flat, and then with that I hold, I show you, I don't touch the bag, you see, it is sterile, it is sterile, but presumably it could be not sterile. So, by precaution, I consider it as non-sterile. I hold one bag with one forceps and the two bags with the other one. You see the bag, you look at it, I will open this forceps, and make the piece fall, and then I can hope that this third envelope is sterile. So I open it without seeing the bacteria, and uh, I take my socket out of it, and then I take the punch, the punch for the socket, I adapt it, and we will, and we will put that in play, into place, Neocortex. Introduction, almost horizontal. You take the contact and then you will make the socket tilt progressively into its position. With the punch. Now I must control that I have obtained a good contact well, let's finish with the socket. We put the fibrillar component in place. Uh, abaissement, adduction, rotation externe. The assistant will present... Wait. He will present the fumer. Regarde ça. Un coup d'écarteur ici, jamais. We try to present... to present the fumer out DD au maximum. Uh, the limb will be put in full adduction, full external rotation, and full hyperextension. Rotation externe complète, adduction complète, et hyperextension complète. Tu pousses gentiment sur le genou. Well, I can put easily this omen. Now I take the rimmer to penetrate into the femur. Adduction maxima, fils. DD, oui. And that, and that should go down very easily. Oui, si tu veux. I must introduce it without any effort. If I had an effort to do, it would mean that I am boring through the cortex. So, but the uh, old Swiss ladies are very hard. Uh, this easy introduction allows me to think that uh, it is a middle size, a middle size stem which will be used. You see that if, if I had penetrated easily down to that point, I would have been loose into the femur and I would have taken a great size. But in that case, I suppose from the X-ray it was medium size and uh, the control with the rimmer indicates. I will tell you exactly the length of the component. <coughs> It's, uh, it's 15, it's, it's six, 16 centimeters. Well, uh, the thin wing and the punch to adapt it. But first, before setting that into place, I will use a trial instrument, a trial instrument, which I, which I set, oh, 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 oh. Uh, here is the trial instrument set on the punch. I push that down into the femur. I push that down into the femur, and this part 
Is this the same size as the actual prosthesis you're going to use? It's two millimeters less. Okay. And uh, this part will cut the inner wall of the greater trochanter to prepare the site of the fin of the prosthesis. I still do the same gymnastics. Do you see? I try not to give uh, an excess of an excess of internal rotation. It makes it a little tricky to let you show. I'll be adapted when I will get the contact of the punch to the neck. Uh, no, the, I take that out. Take the prosthesis. Introduce it in place. Is it always 90 oui? And normally, and normally the fin of the prosthesis should reach, should reach the slot which I have made into the trochanter. I will try and show you that the slot made into the trochanter is here, you see? And that the fin of the prosthesis is going to penetrate into the slot. No, no. Yes. That means that I am at the good level for the prosthesis. Here I have the contact with the neck. Yes. But here, uh, because of the quality of the bone, there is some hollow space which I will fill with some bone graft. Good, thank you. Easy to put in. Robert, do you think the uh, fixation, the extra fixation which you might achieve with these bone grafts really no, makes any mechanical difference? Uh, not at all. I am sure not. I just do that for you. Ah, thank you, Robert. <laughs> I must present, I must present the whole of the bowl. Here it is. Bon. Euh, traction tout doucement, pas d'adduction, direct. Reviens en direct. Oui, mais reviens en direct. <coughs> non, direct. Tu es adduction, là. Tu es en adduction, mais toi, direct. Reviens, reviens droit. Voilà, maintenant, tu tires. Oui, tu tires. Tire. Vas-y. Tu tires. Reduce your putting traction on the leg now, yes. right? We are, we are putting traction on the leg with a 45 degrees external rotation. No abduction, no abduction. Vas-y, tire, tire, mon gars, tire. Je t'arrêterai, je t'arrêterai. Oh, no. Lâche, 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 lâche. J'ai échappé. Lâche. Bon, ça va, ça va. Tire. Encore. Doucement, doucement, oui. Doucement. Stop. Lâche. As you see, as you see the finger, the finger penetrates gently. Oui. Tu pousses même un peu sur le genou. And that is to lock the cone to lock the cone into the head. That's finished. Bon, maintenant, tu veux bien faire des mouvements, des rotations externes, internes. Externes, internes, oui. Et interne, interne, oui. Easy motion. Euh, bon, tu écartes la jambe en abduction, s'il te plaît. Comment Bébé. Bébé. Encore, 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 encore. Rotation interne. I put the limb in position for the suture. That is to say, releasing the muscle, the dancer, 
in abduction, internal rotation, internal rotation, encore, oui, bien, bloc, bloc, oui, et élévation. And flexion, slight flexion, vas-y, 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 tu peux, plus que ça. Pourquoi La barre. Bon, mets la tablette sous le genou, monte la tablette sous le genou. He will flex the knee a little in order to release the tensor. Flex it. Vas-y, monte la tablette. Tu as relâché complètement la traction. I want to feel if there is no piece of bone forgotten somewhere. There is absolutely nothing. Bon. Uh, he will make the suture. I take a cup of coffee and I show, I demonstrate the table immediately. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. Very nicely done. Uh, attention, 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 attention. Il n'y a qu'un chemin où je peux passer. Oui. Il n'y a qu'un chemin où je peux passer. C'est celui-là. Bouge pas. Bouge pas. Voilà, 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 voilà. Voilà, voilà. voilà. C'est mon fil à la patte qui me gêne. Hein? <laughs> okay, Robert, we can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, you see the patient on the table as it was during the operation. You see, the fixation is in boots, which are pretty comfortable for the foot. And uh, we have no compression. It's uh, on here under the knee. You can see this little uh, tablet, Monte de Sané, which can be moved from the, from the end of the limb, downward, as he best, downward, uh, upward, <coughs> without, without moving anything uh, in the region of the operation. The man, uh, the assistant, manipulating the table from the foot, can move the tablet, tirez là. Can move it along the limb, if necessary, you see? And uh, that is very useful, especially for the surgery of fractures. Because you put a, a sterile drap here, and then you can move the limb and have a fulcrum where you want. In the case of uh, the hip surgery, stop. In the case of the hip surgery, I only lift this tablet at the end of the operation when I want to to sustain, to support the knee uh, against hyperextension, ça va. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm here in the operation room and the patient before me is the lady of 20 years old, uh, 20 years old and I marked the uh, iliac crest and iliac spine. I don't forget. The chief point of my operation is to spare the muscles and not to damage the muscles because we want them for re-education and for the, uh, for the future function. You see in the picture now the iliac crest marked and the direction of the, uh, the skin incision. I move a little the, uh, the skin incision to uh, cut to the iliac crest. Then I open here, I expose the tensor fascia from the lateral side not to hurt the cutaneous femoris. Here I can already feel with my finger the prominent fe uh, femoral head, the prominent fem uh, femoral head, and I see the gluteus minimus which goes uh, f near the capsule. I can separate it from the capsule and I take a respiratory and go in between the muscle and I reach the posterior wall of the ilium. Now I take a curved instrument, I go in and push it forward. Bitte noch einmal eine. 
Da, na. Can you show this? So, now, as you see. Thank you very much. Yes. And I replace this uh, curved instrument with a... Uh, with a flexible ribbon, metal ribbon, which I give the shape of the... the I want for protecting the soft parts. I cut the origin of the sartorius. <coughs> and now I put my instrument inside the, uh, pe uh, the pelvis, inside the osilium, and push a little downwards until I come over the innominate line. Now I take again the curved instrument. I come over the innominate line and I fall into the sciatic notch. Again the flexible ribbon which is curved. In order not to want too many uh, instruments, it's good for children and for um, uh, every age. And now I push it into the... Now these two uh, ribbons touch each other in the, uh, in the sciatic notch. I can feel them touch each other. I have protected the iliac vessels and I have protected the, the gluteal vessels. The reflected tendon of the rectus. This has its capsular insertion here and it is cut. Now I touch here the bone. You have here the, the prominent Here is the prominent head. Here is the tensor, uh, the uh, rectus femoris with its, uh, its flexed tendon which I have cut at its capsular insertion. And there with the instrument I touch the bone, the acetabulum, acetabular rim. And this is the region where I have to do the uh, osteotomy. I take now an osteotome of about two centimeters dimension and I put it into this notch. And I fix it in the bone. Now to show you the exact position, we have to do, uh, to take out the metals and to see a new X-ray. You see the, uh, the chisel is, uh, points to the inside of the pelvis and is just above the, uh, the insertion of the capsule. It's correct. And we can continue the operation. And now I have to open the external corticalis of the supraacetabular region. You see the direction chain of my chisel changes. I begin here laterally a little mount ascending 
from zero to uh, uh, six or seven degrees. I con uh, I here I have to uh, to chisel more ascending because I don't want to cut a, a cone, a convergent cone, but a divergent cylinder or a divergent cone to open the osteotomy more in uh, inside. I think we have almost finished. <coughs> Please, uh, X-ray. Yes. You see, I have opened the whole osteotomy. But it does not yet move. There is still a little piece left. has come through and then plan and plan. Now you have seen the dislocation. So you have seen the little dislocation. There had been standing a little point in the a little bridge, bony bridge in the posterior uh, rim of the earth table. Now I have to do this dislocation because the osteotomy is finished. I have to do a strong abduction movement. I do this generally with my table, but this table is not very good for this purpose because the axis of the table doesn't correspond with the axis of the, of the, uh, of the hip. Therefore, we have to loosen the leg. So, I think now it is good and we can leave it. The operation is done, we can close the wound. Zunehmen. Bitte ein paar Dexonfäden. I like to uh, the patient to be fixed after the uh, after the operation because he is easier to be nursed. And I send my patients one week after the osteotomy to a little hospital in this country. And uh, I shouldn't dare this if I had not. I close the wound, it is rather small, the incision, and you see the prominence of the uh, trochanter which was there before is, has disappeared. I don't put a drain in it, in the wound, because a redon drain would suck much uh, blood out of the bone, because I opened a great space of the bone. Now you see here the fixation of the uh, good leg, of the non-operated leg, to the pelvic support, which is very important if you do this forced movement of abduction. I think I can finish. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Gary.